thank you all for being present here and for contributing to this, our 13th uh, annual uh, show of recent grads. So thank you very much for helping us and helping you <coughs> come out in, in terms of coming forward in your first professional show that I know of in this Sunday in this community. Uh, maybe a word about Blackfish for some of you that don't know. Blackfish is one of the nation's oldest cooperative uh, galleries and it was founded by our Irish members back in, in 1979. So we're approaching our 30th year within a few months. So it's really great to have you a part of that coming, coming uh, to fruition. And actually one of our missions has uh, always been as a cooperative gallery to bring art, new artists to the community. Uh, in a sense, that, that'd be part of a way we can give back to the community by showing people that uh, people and their artwork that we haven't seen before and maybe just give us a general idea of what it is you're working on and what you've been doing for your thesis work and maybe be open for a few questions and answers. And for my thesis work, I drew from dream imagery and in this particular pa uh, piece, uh, my goal was to sort of believably blend uh, different places together the way in a dream places overlap with each other. Uh, but have it be on closer inspection, uh, you, you realize that it's, it's surreal or it's weird. Um, and also to sort of uh, create an implied narrative within it and leave most of it up to the viewer. <laughs> This is sort of a, a little bit different than the work I had been doing previous to this. I've been doing a lot of um, minimalist um, abstract shapes. Um, and so I, I sort of wanted to, I kind of did a left turn and, and decided that I was going to see what that kind of translated into with images, incorporating images um, that were more illustrative, um, a little bit more childlike um, um, figures and drawings and, and paintings. And so what, what this sort of is um, spurring off of is a lot of, um, I was doing a lot of uh, reading on academic skepticism and, and our trust in our sense of, senses and, and what exists and what doesn't exist and and kind of taking um, kind of a, that childlike approach of, of hum like kind of a dark satirical humor um, and in this piece specifically it's, um, you kind of see this, uh, you know, this young adult or, or adolescent training bra and, and um, and the hair and what kind of belongs to her and what doesn't. Is the hair hers or is it imposed? Um, and kind of on top of that, is there another environment? What could be imagined um, along with it? And where are you from? I'm from Portland, well, South Carolina. Hey. But I have an MFA, just recently graduated from uh, Portland State. Um, well, this piece is like, it's, it's a good bit different from what I've been working on. A lot of the stuff I've been making has still been in miniature, but it's been uh, hand carved. These were found uh, railroad model figures, and uh, I really liked the, the distortion that goes with the, the small scale, but really this, this is more interesting to me because it's kind of narrative. Um, the distortion I wanted you to be able to see with the magnifying glass and also the the text on each of the, the it's a little like picket, they're little picket signs. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you don't know what kind of laborers they are, but they're they're like, they're upset about something. And uh, the, the narrative I, I hope to like create was was just the, the courage that people get uh, to say something when they're in a group. Um, but if you look closer at the, as to what they're saying, it's, it's really personal stuff. A lot of my influences lately have been literary and played with that much yet in my actual uh, artwork. My senior show, I decided to do portraits of people because I love people and I love getting to know people. Um, and so I didn't just want to do a picture of someone. Um, so what I did was I talked to one of the psychology professors at Fox and I got a list of um, interesting questions to really dive deep into someone's life to ask them. So I picked five people who I knew, and um, this is my husband and this is my mom, and I asked questions like, what would you do with the last five days of your life? And then I took their answers and created from those answers something that I felt would portray them as who they are. And so my mom's, it's so funny, as children, you view your parents 
as your parents and you really very rarely see them as just people living out their lives in their own way. And so it was so interesting to get to interview my mom because, you know, like one of the questions was, what, what is important to you in your life? And in my mind, I was thinking first thing out of her mouth was, my kids. And she's like, uh, music, uh, drama. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, I'm like, what about me? So, <laughs> so um, she's a pink lady. She's very feminine. Um, uh, always the housewife. Um, she got to come into her own, I'm not saying this was a good thing, uh, that my parents got a divorce, it wasn't, but she got to come into her own um, after the divorce. She's an extremely giving person, so the hand represents uh, giving. Um, if I made the rings, I'm a silversmith, so I made the rings inside and those represent the three kids. My husband, I got to learn things about him as well that I didn't know um, <laughs> before I married him. Almost all of his answers um, to the questions that I asked in one way, shape, or form had to do with um, his relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I was like, wow, you're more spiritual than I thought. This is his past, he's this broken little baby and um, the Holy Spirit you know, came to him and then this is who he is now. He's, he's got the joy of the Lord and that's why he's got such a big smile. I mean, if you know my husband, he doesn't smile all the time. I'm from George Fox University, which is out in wine country, Newburgh. What I did for my senior show is I had been working with interior materials, gown materials, um, as that's one of my passions. And I was working with uh, biblical women and how to make them personal to me as their, actual, their real life story. And what it is is uh, Jephthah made a vow to God that if he would give him victory in battle, that he would provide a burnt offering um, of the first thing that comes through his gates when he comes home. And it ended up being his daughter as she was rejoicing of his return and victory. It says that she came back and he did what he said he would do and she knew no, ver uh, knew no man. And so it's a really challenging one for, for Christians. What What is that whole, you know, what was going on here? Um, and instead of, you know, letting that really discourage me or you know, I was looking at, there's so many different cultural contexts of what was going on there. There's a sacrificial uh, character and that she just um, was putting her father's honor before God, um, before her life. And uh, so I chose a really um, somber, sacrificial uh, pose 